What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through Sunday, uh, the full N N N NFL slate. We just did a video for the Saturday slate, um, which is a lot of speculation at this point. And uh, this game, this one, you know, it's, it's on the small slate. You're looking for the weird plays to get a little different on the big slates. We want to find the right games to stack and all that. Sheets, any overall thoughts before we jump into game by game? Um, I would just like to add uh, or, or remind everybody that as you get to these last, you know, month or whatever the season, the, the discrepancy in weather makes a lot more difference than it did early in the season. So that's why you're going to see like some real heavy totals on these on dome games and good weather games as opposed to these to the, to the crappy weather games. So yeah. um, um, I guess I even think about it in the context of this slate quite yet. But um, it's just something that I remind myself to think about. And, and obviously, injury news and all that stuff, especially down the stretch, is going to become more more relevant. You'll start to see in those last couple of weeks, these 3K running backs or whatever that start to come out of nowhere. That'll be that'll always be a fun scene. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, I'm ready to get after it. All right, let's jump right into it. Um, let's pull up your screen and we'll go game by game and we'll be off to the races. Um, all right. Pittsburgh, Carolina is the first one. Definitely a game that on its face doesn't look like uh, you want to go crazy with it. Uh, I, I do think there's some merit for Najee Harris. Um, and I'm willing to gamble a little bit on that play. I also, I also think that the receivers are still super cheap and, and have enough upside to get there, both Deontay Johnson and Pickens. So I, I'm okay with like taking shots on, on, on these guys. I, I, I'm, they're not priorities for me, but they're guys who I don't mind mixing in. Um, and then you have the Friar Muth, who's been really good, assuming that he does play. Um, but I, I have a lot of respect for Carolina's defense and 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 actually how well they've been playing. Uh, DJ Moore is my favorite uh, of their receivers. And then I, I am probably going to get off of the Deontay Foreman because of how much they used Hubbard last week. But I'm open to Foreman as well. Um, but for me, it's mostly DJ Moore on the Carolina side and nothing that I'm overwhelmingly excited, not a game that I'm looking to stack. All right. So I, I, uh, I changed my mind. I do have an overall take on the slate, just kind of scanning it. Um, I think this is going to be the lowest scoring slate of the year. I I'm telling you, there's no way after that one week. <laughs> yeah. That one week um, where we had nobody over 200 on all of DraftKings. I don't know. I don't think anybody's going to over 200 this week. Either. Okay. Okay. Uh, there are only a couple of games for me that even that, that that seemed worth playing if you want to well, you said in the other video you wanted to play that you wanted to win a million this week maybe this is the, this is the sheet slate absolutely they don't pay you less money because you get less fantasy points absolutely you know, not. yeah that's what it is i mean so yeah. and, and and the thing is is that you know pit carolina like you said on its face doesn't sound too too thrilling but on a slate that's not too thrilling um you know you can make yourself a little it makes yourself some allowances like i do think that Najee harris you know listen i know that he's going to get the work and I know that uh, Pickens, Deontay Johnson, and Fryer move you get to work on the on the receiving side. So, yeah, I mean it's it's okay. Again, it's not the not the greatest game in the world, but and I don't necessarily want a full stack it or anything like that. But you can make pieces out of this, and and yeah, as I kind of suspected, I mean you get a kind of a split backfield with uh, with Hubbard and, and Foreman. Obviously, Foreman's the, the the more likely guy, but but Hubbard, Hubbard actually got more rushes than I thought he was going to. Like I thought Hubbard could get some work out of the backfield, um, is with with the pass catching. But he got more rushes than I than I was thought for some reason. I really thought it was going to be Foreman and then Hubbard out of the backfield. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, for for passing. Mm -hmm. um, in any case, I think they're both just kind of okay. I think DJ Moore as always is kind of just okay. Um, but overall, it's definitely not one of my favorite favorite games. Yeah. Um, uh, same page. The, the thing with the Hubbard, he 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 was just he played really really well and had that had a big play early. So I think got more work than, than maybe we would, would have thought he was going to, but Foreman still had 21 carries. I mean, they run the ball a lot, <laughs> um, but, uh, but, and, 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 and Pittsburgh is, is medium against the run um, a little bit uh, worse against the past. I, I, I think that maybe you, I, one guy I didn't mention is I guess for large field stuff, Terrence Marshall at 3,500, but probably not going to be all that interesting to me. All right. So what's this? What's the spread? What's the total on the on the Philadelphia Chicago game? The Philly Chicago game is forty eight and a half. And what is it for Chicago? All right, I knew I had to get that one in there. <laughs> so if if Josh Fields is playing, oh excuse me, if Justin Fields is playing, um, it certainly looks like he could. But like this is the game. This is one game they can get get to ninety. You know what I mean? Um, you got both Hertz and Justin Fields on the field. Two. Those are two of like the basically fantasy MVPs this season. 
Um, and I don't think either team could stop the other one. Uh, that, that's And listen, Philadelphia's defense is obviously better than Chicago's defense, but all that means is that Justin Fields is going to be scrambling and maybe another 150 yards in, on the ground, you know, if in fact he's healthy enough to, to mm-hmm. pull that off. So I think this is, this is one game that could kind of go ballistic. Um, uh, who are you going to play? Well, that's, that's for someone smarter than me, but uh, I would start with the two quarterbacks and on the Philly side, it's kind of easier. You know, if you wanted to play, I think it's pretty clear. Now you, you have Devontae Smith, you have AJ Brown, and then, you know, Miles Sanders is obviously every day, just kind of a part of it, you know? So, um, he broke the slate twice in like three weeks or something like that. Um, so uh, the Philly guys, Chicago, I don't know exactly what to do. He hasn't played in a while, so I forgot who he's supposed to throw the ball to. I guess, I guess it would be Mooney would be the guy, and and maybe go back to uh, Mo- Mooney. Mooney hasn't played in, in Mooney hasn't played in a while. Yeah, well, maybe go back to my my hero. How about back to Cole Komet or something like that? Um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, I think this is listen. This game doesn't have to blow up. Billy could just 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 stick it to them and it could win 31 to 10. I mean that's possible too, you know, but um in, in on a slate which is very devoid of of I think of really really big scores. We'll get to a couple of them, but but I think this is one you have to consider. Yeah, absolutely. I am actually shocked that the projections don't don't like yeah. like the ownership is just not showing up in this game. I will just over hammer the hell out of this game. Like I like both sides of it. I think it's very clear if you're going to play if you're going to play uh, Fields, you could play him with either Claypool or Komet, and neither of them are going to Claypool. Be, that was the guy I was thinking of. Okay. Neither of them are going to be especially owned. Um, uh, and and I think more more so though, I want to stack Fields with one of those guys, and then maybe use at least one of Devonte Smith, AJ Brown, or Quez Watkins, and Ooh. I'll mix in a little bit of Sanders and Montgomery. This whole game is I like all the main pieces, and I think it's yeah. going to be lower owned than it should be because it's hard to get these guys in. Um, so I am a, I'm a big fan of this one. This is right now my top game stack at the moment. Yep. All right. So if it wasn't bad enough for Houston, um, the only guy that was doing anything ever this whole season, Damian Pierce, he's out now. Um, so now we got, <laughs> and, and so, so what Houston did before Damian Pierce was ruled out, they released, Eno Benjamin. <laughs> so it's, maybe that wasn't the smartest idea in the world. Um, so now what they have running back wise is Ugubuki, Rex Burkhead, and the ghost of Royce Freeman. Um, I, I I don't know. I can't, I I I just have this weird feeling that Optimizer is going to spit some of this out. I'm just I'm just I give up. I'm not doing it. I'm I'm just not doing it. Um, uh, it's just it's going to be 35 to nothing, and that's just kind of the deal. I don't know, let's see. Let let's just see. Let's see what the, these receivers are back somehow. Is any chance that Brandon Cooks is going to be back? I don't know. Any chance Nico Collins is going to be back? I don't think I don't so. Know. Chris Moore. Okay, so he's the okay. So Chris Moore at forty two hundred is got to be the best play in this game. I mean, excuse me, on this side, um, he was getting all the targets, and presuming those guys are still out. Obviously, Houston. They, 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 they may be back. I shouldn't have spoken so soon. They're, 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 it's up in the air. I just wonder what they're saving them, what they're playing them for if they do play. I'm sorry. Yeah, right now I've got them projected out, but I think that's a big. I guess that's a big piece of it. So Chris Moore would be would be would be the guy. Um, Jordan Nakin's going to project once again to be a good play at 2700. I don't know about that. Um, and then on the Kansas City side, you know, it's the same thing. You know, how many points does Kansas City want to score? Well, I guess we're going to find out. Uh, Schuster's look better. Um, uh, what's his name? MVS was just non-existent. He just uh, dropped every freaking pass. Yeah, but he only had three targets anyway. No, um, I know, but that's what it happens every week, though. He'll drop, he'll drop a pass, and then then he doesn't get looked at the next, you know, the same way. Uh, I think Kelsey's in the game as long as he as he as he needs to be. Um, I don't think it's like a Kelsey, you know, one fifty and two game or anything like that. Oh, it could be actually. He get one fifty two on the first two possessions. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What happens? What happens the rest of the time? What happens after the first quarter? Yeah, exactly. Um, so Kansas City is going to project to be, uh, you know, they're going to project to be good because they have a, you know, you know, a hundred team total or whatever it is. But you know, how many quarters are you going to get out of it? I don't know. Uh, I'm probably just going to probably, I'll end up like losing some money on Chris Moore. I should, I shouldn't even say it that way. I think I think he's actually a very good play. Um, because Davis Mills is not the worst. 
they are going to be coming from the high. Kansas City is going to they have to give up something, right? It's not like they're they're the eighty six Bears or anything like that. So I think that Chris Moore is going to rack up probably a very similar probably a very similar stat line to last week if you get the same environment like when these other guys are out. I think ten I think ten receptions for whatever however many yards that was is is. I'm maybe not for a hundred, but whatever, that's asking a little too much, but I think eight receptions for 80 and maybe almost, I don't know, get a touchdown. That'd be obviously be great, but I think he's definitely the best play from, from these. Yeah. I mean, if, as it stands, I think that, that Chris Moore or Aikens, um, you know, it was a kind of a crazy week last week against Dallas where Moore was catching everything. Um, yeah. I wouldn't expect that again. Um, although it is, it is the chiefs where offense is, come to 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 find themselves <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so uh, a lot of stuff going on here a lot of cheap plays for kansas city who it usually just ends up being like mckinnon <laughs> like um i like mckinnon and pacheco um i think that i would split them up mckinnon gets so much of the passing work it's ridiculous i mean he had seven catches for 112 yards last week and yeah. two touchdowns um he had a touchdown receiving the week before he's had uh three games in the last seven with six catches or more he's had uh three of those games with eight or more targets like i just like the idea of mckinnon and that play that did you see them at mahomes to mckinnon play last week well he already shoveled it down the side that was crazy i've never seen that happen before oh like, are you kidding me he does it like 11 times every week but, but that mean, was like, the most no look weird one i've ever i've seen like it was just the strangest play anyway um yeah, I, I don't really love this game, to be honest with you. A little bit of game script issues, and I worry that it's hard to stay close. But Kansas City will give up enough to where maybe we should include, like, some more in Aikens and in into some builds. Um, probably not the right week for Kelsey for me, but I I, I think I'll take it. I would consider taking a shot again with all this gambling if Tony's out again. But mostly it's going to be Pacheco or McKinnon for me as uh, my favorite plays here. All right. Um, so, so, so Dallas Jacksonville. So Dallas obviously looked legit pathetic last week um, on their deathbed hands and knees to beat Houston. Okay. They were, they, they, first of all, they, they, Dak was awful. <laughs> like, and, and not, it's almost, you can't blame them. They, they just insist on pounding the rock. Um, and I think this is a, I think it's a tough spot again for Dallas. You know, the other thing about Dallas They've lost some defenders over the last couple of weeks. I think one of the one of their best players is out for the season. I think I'm not exactly sure which one. There's, there's so many of them, mm -hmm. um, and I think Jacksonville could have another really really good game here. I don't know what the spread is. It must be close to Dallas may be favored by a couple of points, but it can't be by that much, right? Right. Um, right. They're, they're I, I, by five, yeah. Yeah, I think Jacksonville could have another. I mean, listen, I can't ask for what these guys did last week, but. Uh, listen, it's definitely an easy, a tougher matchup, whatever. But I, I would really go right back to Jacksonville here. I think Dallas is kind of in trouble with these injuries on defense. Um, I would I would play uh, Lawrence again with the same guys with 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 Engram, with uh, with Zay Jones, with Kirk. I guess if he's still around, and and Etienne really hasn't done much recently. But I I would include him in my pools. Um, and then and then the Dallas and again, I just I just worry that. That they're they're really looking at this that that Zeke and and Pollard they're just going to just continue to pound it and I I don't know how much of the Dallas passing game I kind of want to play um, maybe I'm being too biased recency biased that they were just so awful last week uh, take that last drive out of it they literally did nothing like the whole game yeah. except turn the ball over um, so I do like the Jacksonville side I'll be a sucker for the recency bias on this one uh, and uh, yeah that's about it. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm on the other side. I like Dallas to cover this one. Um, but I don't necessarily feel like there's anybody I need to play for DFS. And it's kind of weird because I, I like the, I like the, I, I will have some game stacks here, but I like the individual plays don't feel great. Um, I think Dalton Schultz might be the best play and Michael Gallup would be my second favorite. And then I I'm open to both Pollard and, and, and Elliot. I mean, we did just see Jack. I mean, Jacksonville has been torched a number of times this season, even though their defense at other times has looked really good. The best play in the game is going to pr project to be Zay Jones. Uh, I am totally good with that. Um, I do like Zay Jones. So uh, that's, that's my, my initial feeling. And, and I think Evan Ingram off the monster game, maybe they keep looking for him. Like uh, if he, if he goes unowned again, I don't expect him to do what he did last week, but he looked really, really good. And I've been wondering for years what happened, you know, since he was a, with the giants, 
why, why can't they make this guy into a player? He looks like a player. Like he looks, he looks athletic. He catches the ball. He can, you can run all kinds of stuff for him. He almost looks like a receiver at times. I, I maybe, maybe they're finding a way to incorporate him more. So say, so Zay Jones and Ingram are my favorites. Don't mind if you want to play Kirk, but, uh, and then, and then I'll, I'll probably end up playing a little bit of Pollard uh, as a, as a, as a, a little bit ahead of Zeke, but I, I think they're both, they're both viable. Um, go ahead, Cheats. I'll take a step further with this Evan Ingram thing. I legitimately had to Google like three different times to see if it was literally the same Evan Ingram that was on the Giants. Right. What like what happened to him? And also they went out to they, they went out and got him. Like they actually wanted to get him. So Yeah. I, I remember mean, him being like fatter. I remember him being like, yep. you know what I mean? I just I don't remember him being good. You know what I mean? I remember him being a guy that we would play at 3,200 just as somebody to play, I guess. But but this guy, I mean he still looks like a different guy. Um on the Dallas side, the obvious, like real ch- I mean. Real cheap guy. My Gallup is forty five hundred. I mean, that's uh, that that's 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 a, a great deal of interest to me. Um, CD Lamb seventy three hundred, maybe a little bit too much, but Schultz I like. Noah Brown at thirty four hundred. If this game like does what I think and they get get some get some points up on the board, and Dallas does have to go to passing games or whatever. Yep. Um, Noah Brown I like, and I'm I'm not gonna say he's gonna play. I'm not gonna say anything. Um, but I would just note what I said to you offline. T Y Hilton is on the team. Uh, probably just for depth in case people get injured or whatever it is. Um, but at that uh, point, at that point, the only problem is like, why wouldn't we just play Noah Brown, who just had a good game? You well, know what I mean? No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying for now. He's probably yeah, not yeah. even play. You just but, you, know, you never know. Like, when does Dallas play in a dome next or something like that? You know, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe uh, get him in a dome game, T.Y. Hilton or something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but I, I definitely think that this game is is a lot of potential. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Zay Jones, ATN, and Gallup uh, being my favorites with one of Zeke or Pollard definitely being in play. Um, I wouldn't surprise me, though, at all if you see like Dallas win this game like 27 to three or though. Uh, I, I I think we're we got to slow down a little bit. Like we just saw Jacksonville who couldn't like I know they put up all those points last week. They couldn't score against Detroit the week before. You know what I mean? Let's not get let's I, I just don't want to go overboard on assuming Jacksonville's now like this awesome offense. I think they're just they're just up and down. I do think they're 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 made for next year, um, but but you know maybe it shows up a week early. I think this is behind the uh, Philadelphia Chicago game for me, but I, it's hard not to consider it on this kind of slate. Yeah, I don't like the defensive injuries for Dallas. I think they're 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 big of yeah, trouble. Maybe we'll we'll talk about it. so so speaking of like Detroit and speaking of you know and all this stuff you know we listen we we would play every offense on the face of the earth against the Detroit Lions right and okay so who do we got this week. So they're playing at the Jets. Now, the Jets are not necessarily the greatest offensive team in, in history. And the weather in New York is is certainly not as great as it is pretty much anywhere else in the face of the earth nowadays. Um, it's, uh, the weather could be kind of fishy in New York, actually, this weekend also. Um, however, you know, you, you have like a really, really good receiver for the Jets. I mean, legit. Um, uh, that can generate fantasy points. And... Uh, Mike White, I have him as questionable, probably intending to play. Um, and listen, you talk about winning a lot of money, whatever. I I can't even say winning a lot of money because I have to think that people are going to play Garrett Wilson. I mean, they just he just gets there. He seems to get there every week now. And uh, uh, so so I, I and I do like that. I do I do like Garrett Wilson as a one off. Maybe maybe a super sneaky like a like a like a jet stack with like White and him. But then again, you're now now you have. It's so funny, like you have the defenses doesn't matter argument. So what do you do here with 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 St. Brown and Detroit and all these Detroit guys that people play every week? But the Jets are stingy. You know what I mean? Like the Jets are stingy and they have that freaking stud at defensive back, right? Um, what what happens here? Does it, does the St. Brown after kind of a pedestrian game just bounce back in the cold against a better defense and score forty? Uh yeah, it could. Um, I have to see where kind of where ownership comes in on this. Josh Reynolds got more work than I was expecting. I think last week, uh, DJ Shark is in play at forty five hundred. Um, I wonder if DeAndre Swift at fifty seven hundred is going to be a good running back play. Um, the other thing I mentioned for this game, I want you to speak on this because you spoke about him last week, and he had a pretty pretty good game. Was um, was uh, was Zonovan Knight? Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't play him, but but he. We did very nicely, you know. He had up, uh, a, he had got a touchdown, mm-hmm. fifteen fans. I mean, he probably could have even done better, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, so uh, 
And that was yeah. in Buffalo too. This is this is this is Detroit. I know. I mean, maybe maybe that's what you're supposed to do. How about how about a Mike White, Donovan Knight, uh, Garrett Wilson with a something run back from Detroit, and 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 hope that they get there in the cold. Yeah, I, 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 this is my, this is this game I have actually a little bit ahead of Dallas and. Ja- and oh, Jackson. nice! Look at that. So, so I'm, I'm big on this one. Um, okay. Love Garrett Wilson. Love Donovan Knight. I'm totally open to using Mike White. I probably wouldn't use him with Donovan Knight because it game script issues. Like just like Knight will get a couple of catches out of the backfield, but more they're going to use Carter in that role, um, which is what they've done. I mean, he had six targets last week, okay. so. Um, but I, I like the whole receiving core. I, I, I'll, I'll sprinkle in some Corey Davis. I, it's Detroit. So I'm always willing to take a shot with everybody. I'll sprinkle in some Elijah Moore. Um, Elijah Moore, maybe this is the time. Like he had 10 mm. targets last week. We're finally getting there. Um, so I, I, I like, I like both, both receiving cores on this, on this, in this game. You know, how, about your, how about your other hero? How about that? Tyler Conklin. Yeah. I'll, I'll include Tyler Conklin in the mix. Absolutely. Mm. Um, but I kind of like the idea of, of Ingram a little better, but like he's 3,100, he's a little cheaper. So yeah, absolutely. Included some Tyler Conklin. Um, and, and then because St. Brown has a really tough matchup, there's two ways I would look at it. Like sauce Gardner, you know, is a rookie, the rookie corner. And, and look, you're going to have some bad games. Occasionally this guy's awesome. He's going to be yeah. one of the best cornerbacks in the Sorry. NFL for the next 15 years. Um, but that also means possible one-on-one coverage more often for St. Brown. So I, I like I like the idea of playing one of these guys. I think I think Shark would actually be my favorite. Um, and I and the problem is Jamison Williams is a stud, and he's going to start getting more and more work. Yep. And yep. it's hard to know what to do with that whole situation. So I mean, they they all caught touchdowns last week. Uh, Reynolds, except for St. Brown, just Reynolds, Shark, and and Jamison Williams. Um, I don't think that's going to happen again. But if Jamison Williams is somehow in like the starting lineup, I will take my shots with Jamison Williams. Um, I just think there's so much talent there. Um, and, and, and I like the idea of using Swift more than I like the idea of using Williams this week, Jamal Williams. Um, th- I think that, that, that because, you know, th- they had the game more in control, they use sort of Williams as just sort of like the, the, the ca- casual carrying it back um, when they need to score and they need big plays. They tend to use Swift more in the passing game. So if I had to pick one of the running backs, that's who I'd pick on this side, but I'm, I'm higher on Zonovan Knight, DJ Shark, uh, uh, Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson. That's sort of my core for this game. And I think you can use Mike White. I would use Mike White before I use Jared Goff. That's my take. Corey Davis was out last week. Um, so just, and he's in concussion protocol this week. So mm-hmm. just keep an eye on that. And if he's out again, then, then yeah. He got, got hurt, that, he got hurt um, against the Bills in that game. Yeah. So he's in the concussion protocol for this week and they're, they're not sure what's going to happen with him. And yes, if he's out, then the Elijah Moore is, is definitely... Definitely someone that popped in and shows up there. Yep, absolutely. All right, um, moving oh, on. You, you didn't talk about the, the running backs. Do you like DeAndre Swift at all from Detroit? Yeah, I did, I did, I did talk about him. Okay. I, oh, I, I like Swift better than Williams, but I don't, I don't necessarily – I prefer Knight and, and ATN and other guys in that price range a little bit over those guys. And then we get into the Atlanta-New Orleans game, which is certainly not a game that I'm – I'm looking to stack or anyone in my opinion should be looking to stack. There are, there's some plays here though. Drake London's 4,700 Jarvis Landry's 3,800 Kamara's only 6,800. I, I could see playing those guys. That's pretty much my, my level of interest in this game. Yeah. I'll add just a couple of things. Number one is that I would be a hypocrite if I didn't reinforce that this is, this is a dome game in, in, in a, on, on a, on a, on a slate with, with, without a lot of stuff. So if there was something to play, I would play it. Um, and I will just throw in that, that, uh, Chris Olave is very dynamic and he's got a lot of upside. Um, mm-hmm. so, uh, if I get to Olave, I will definitely play him. Uh, I wouldn't like go so far as to stack like Dalton with these guys or whatever it is. I don't know exactly, not that anybody does is, is, is Alvin Kamara just like dead. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know what exactly the deal is with him, but he's completely unplayable as far as fantasy goes right now. Um, I'll play him. I guess, but I mean, I can't, I can't think of this like literally as, I mean, no games that work. Oh, yeah, he's got a 40. He does have a 40. I, I shouldn't say that. He yeah, does he have did. one. He does have one in week eight, um, but nothing in the last six weeks that, that give me anything to, okay. So, however, we, okay. All, so, all, all, uh, by the way, right. all very yep. good run defenses that he faced. Yep. Yep. I was about to say at Tampa, at San Fran, 
Rams at Pitt. A- abs- absolutely. Totally, totally agree. So maybe I will throw him in. Um, uh, on the Atlanta side, you mentioned Jake, Drake London. Uh, I wonder how my man Patterson has been doing. Has he been getting him anything? 11, 11 rushing attempts. Like they stop handing him the ball, just throw it to him, Christ's sake. You know what I mean? Like, what are they doing? Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. It's just so hard. I mean, he's not even the main running back. Like, it, it, it's it's truly a three-man split situation, and they like all of them. So, it's really hard when you start getting into Patterson for me. Like, I, I would just rather play. the If, if I'm going to play a split running back, I want one of the two, not one that's a three part of a three-man running team. But he's going to run the ball a lot against a good run defense. Um, or better run defense than their, their – their, um, uh, yeah, anyway um, – I can't, I can't get myself to Corderell, but I definitely can get to some of the, uh, I, 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 Alave, um, London and, and Kamara are the three guys I'm considering from this game. That's okay. Cool. So we have Kyler Murray with a torn ACL out for, I guess, a year, whatever that, whatever ACL. You, you have a 90% owned Denver defense. Is that what you're getting? No. Um, what I was getting at was uh, a couple of things. Uh, number one, I don't know exactly who's going to be. So Cole McCoy is going to be quarterback, obviously. And he was perfectly, perfectly yeah. passable. Yeah. He was perfectly passable. Um, uh, I, to, to your point, I, I'm in no position to be recommending offensive players against Denver, uh, especially at Denver. So I'm probably going to be you know, off of that. But I will say that these guys are pretty cheap. Um, Hopkins 7,700 for what he can do is somewhat cheap. Marquise Brown, even if, if Rondo Moore remains out at 5,500 is some, is, is, is somewhat cheap. Um, James Connor, we got to watch and see if he's even playing, right? He, he, oh, he's, yeah. oh, I thought that he got hurt for a minute. I, I, I think he's going to play as a he came back. And so I imagine he's going to get a, a crap load of the work. Um, but I, I got a different idea. I, I, I kind of I kind of want to play Denver. Um, I, I want to see obviously who's playing. Um, well, starting with the quarterback. I mean, I don't I don't know Russell Wilson with that big welt on his face. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know He's what. Not playing. He ain't playing. Oh, you don't think Russell Wilson's playing? I don't okay. think. So. Well, just 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 for fun. Maybe, maybe he does. Maybe he does. Who is the quarterback? Oh, Brett Rippin. It'd be Brett Rippin or, or is that Mark Rippin's son? Is that I possible? think it is. Yeah. Um. Uh, Arizona's defense stinks. Okay. Um, I, I will, I will just leave it. I'm not going to leave it at that. And if Russell Wilson does play, um, and like, for example, Sutton remains out somehow. Uh, I don't know if Hidden's playing. I, I think Jerry Judy could have a good game against Arizona. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's a rough one, man. <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a rough one. Uh, that that was just my initial take. I'm, I'm probably not going to do it though. Uh, Dulcich, obviously, Dulcich has a pretty bad game. His last one, he, actually, they threw him some bad balls. I mean, he really didn't have much yeah. of a shot for the targets he had. Um, so I guess he'll be he'll be decent again. But no, I, I boy oh boy, what is the total in this game? It's got to be really low. Right? Was it forty? Not 30, even thirty six and a half. Yeah, that's about right. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm who am I kidding? What, what's Denver's What's Denver's defense? Five K? What, what are they? Twenty seven hundred. Oh, They're going to be. Seven There's another one we got to fade. Oh crap. Um, but okay. All yeah, right. They're the obvious cash game defense at the first look. I will just say that McCoy has been a little better than people thought, but it's Denver. Denver's defense is really good. Um, for me in this game, it's basically just Dulcich and Denver's defense at the at the moment. That sounds really, about right. What really about what it. about uh, what about you Latavius? Could, you could argue for him, sure. Like. Um, I think that's, I think it's fine. I, I'm not excited about it. How, how about, how about Mr. Marlon Mack? Well, I can't play. He was in the game last week. Yeah. Because they, when they were coming back and everything, they were down by three scores right away. And then he was in the game was their offense and they started moving the ball, but like in the game and, and playing him or I just don't, I don't, he was, don't he was on the field. Isn't that what we look for? I mean, he had 15 fantasy field. points, but I, I, I just, I get, I mean, he had that okay, first all right. down catch, but I, I just, I, I would rather just, played other games personally all right what do you got next i want to know who exactly uh bill belichick is going to try to lock down is it going to be josh jacobs or is it going to be Devontae adams good luck getting both of them um 
Uh, those are two tough guys to, 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 to get a hold of right now. Um, and as, as scary as it is, uh, I have Vegas as perfectly viable as one of the top stacks and one of the top offenses. Now, what you're supposed to do now is say, Sheets, stop playing freaking drop back quarterbacks. Stop stacking guys like Derek Carr on slates where you have Jalen Hurts and Justin Fields. Okay. Um, all right, fine. I'll, I'll wait. I'll play a drop. I'll play a better. I'll play a drop back quarterback next game. Okay. So, so, so I definitely think Josh Jacobs just has to be in play literally every week. And I think that Devontae Adams has to be in play every week. I'll tell you who else is not bad. 30 every single week. Yeah. Right. And I, ha- I have to say you also is not bad as the, um, is Mac Hollins. No, I, like him I too. agree. Me too. Um, New England, I wonder what they're going to be left with uh, after all the the injury stuff. Yeah, me too. Uh, between Stevenson and 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 Harris and the the, the receivers, so we're just going to have to wait, I guess, to see what's up. But the Vegas guys are going to listen. They're, you're gonna, these guys are all going to show up, and you're going to show up with with some with a stack of of, of Carr with both Jacobs and Adams, and you know wanting somebody to run back with New England. And then when the score is 16 to 13 finally, you're going to say, why do we stack guys against Belichick? You know, but, but these guys are freaking legit. I mean, Josh Jacobs and Devontae Adams are two of the best offensive players in the league right now. So um, uh, it's, it's hard to just say, don't play him against New England. So these guys are showing up as, as a top uh, offense for me. And I can't really comment anything New England wise. So I know he's playing. Yeah. If Jacoby Myers plays, I'll have interest in Jacoby Myers. If no Stevenson and Harris plays, then I would have some interest in Harris. Um, that's pretty much it for the New England side for me. Uh, maybe Hunter Henry. I think that's an okay, it's a good matchup. Um, and then, like you said, just one of Adams or uh, or Jacobs. Absolutely, I'm 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 on the Adams side more than I am the Jacobs side, but I like both of them, and I'm going to play some of both. That's so it. I would imagine. What what the hell do I know? I mean, I don't really have ownership yet. I would imagine this next team would probably be the chalk. Um, be the chargers i mean you, tennessee the only thing you could do against them is pass against them and and in the last two games this is this is what part of it was happened whatever um and you have both the guys from the the chargers receivers still being really really affordable i say both of them they have a couple of guys but Allen is 6800 mike williams is 6300 justin herbert is really good um and then you could certainly run it back with dehember uh if you want uh and uh, also, the guy that you liked, and, and I thought I think he ended up having a good game. This, um, yeah, this guy uh, on a Quango or whatever. He he got he had six targets and a touchdown. Um, so uh, that's what I would do. I mean, I think it's obviously the logical game. You know, to play play Herbert like you always do with these with these dudes, um, and you can play other guys from the from the from the from the from the Chargers if you want. Um, you could play the uh, Gerald Everett if you want a tight end. Uh, you could play even Palmer. He's probably a little expensive, I think. Um, I'd probably find the money for these other guys. But I think this is obviously a team to play. And uh, I don't know. What do you think about this this game? Yeah, um, the way you beat Tennessee is through the air. And the Chargers can certainly, get, you know, air it out. Yep. Um, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams are the priority guys for me. Um, I, I have no problem if people want to play some Eckler. That's I prefer uh, Henry in this game, and I love Traylon Burks. So I like this as a as a little bit of a stack a stackable one. Um, and even though like the weird thing to do is is maybe maybe you could consider some Tannehill lineups. Um, I'm just flirting with it as a cheap quarterback option. Um, he actually does have some rushing upside, but he's 5,300. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a guy who I think you can get to in this game stack. And the, the more obvious one is the Herbert to Allen and Williams. Um, and, or, you know, you could throw Everett into the mix, but, um, I, I like this game. Um, there's always the risk that in general with Tennessee, that, that if, if they do run the ball, that they can control the game on the ground, but in LA against the chargers team that doesn't, that gives up too much. I'm guessing he breaks free for one of those and uh, the game keeps moving and, and, and there, there could be a good pace. I like the over in this game uh, 47 and a half. I think it's a really good one to target. And I have it right there with my, with my Philly uh, Philly and uh, Chicago love. So I'm into this one. All right. So you didn't like T- any. So T Higgins can go F himself. Uh, 
I'm sorry, I was just kind of like, fault. I know, it's kind of like off. The, the, the Bengals organization can have this. Happen. Yeah, there you go. For, for not being a little more honest with what's going on with him. Anyway, um, okay, so let's just start with this. If, in fact, T. Higgins is out, and if, in fact, Tyler Boyd is out, you have a 3,600 Irwin um, for Cincinnati, who's probably going to be the second receiver, um, I imagine, uh, unless – was this, did Taylor get anything in this last game? Why well, some of these Irwin. guys have got to play, right? Yeah, but to me, it's going to be it, it would be Irwin, um, and obviously Chase is you know he's he's kind of expensive, you know, and Tampa is Tampa's going to want to play. Listen, not that people teams always get what they want, but they're going to want to play a good game after their freaking performance last week. Um, but they're horrible. <laughs> but they're well. You know, every, yeah. Everybody's good. Everybody's horrible. Everybody's whatever. They're no. They're, they're, they're really. Home. They're, they're, they're really at home in a must win game with some guys on the team with a little bit of pride. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think they can put up a good game. You know, and I think their defense can still put up a good game. They got. They. they before they blinked, the game was over against San Francisco, right? Um, so I think it's going to be actually a tighter game. Uh, Boy, oh boy. So can I play anybody from Tampa? Um, sure. Uh, boy, you don't get a break though, right? Godwin 6,700, Evans 6,200. I don't want to play the running backs, maybe. Great. Otten. Brady. Oh, I don't know. I mean, right, right now, I'm really not getting to much of anything on the Tampa side. It would be more kind of Cincinnati. But I don't I man, I'm just too biased. I, I I just don't I don't want to play too much Cincinnati in this spot. I think Tampa's gonna come up kind of big. And I think that uh I don't think Cincinnati's gonna have as, as easy of a time uh uh moving the ball against Tampa as they have against other teams. Uh yeah, I, I think Tampa is just completely garbage. Um I, I don't think anybody's gonna have any trouble doing whatever they want on them personally, like in terms of throwing the ball. Um so I, I actually am always as always gonna have a Cincinnati stack. Um <laughs> regardless of who's playing tight of who, of what receivers are available. Uh, I just don't, I, I don't think Tampa is any good. I, it doesn't mean they can't win some games and grind something out. I'd like to find some things to do here. Um, you know, Julio Jones, those numbers, the, the targets are, might, might feel a little fraudulent because the, you know, he got more targets last week than he's had all season, but it was in a, they were down 35, nothing like in, in no time. Um, but Jones, Evans, Godwin, uh, one of those three is a run back potentially for the, uh, the, the, the chase and burrow with potentially Hurst if he's available or Boyd or Higgins, depending on who plays or Trent and Irwin, if, if those guys don't. Um, but I, I'm definitely interested in this game. I just want to see who's playing before I commit anything more to it. I am not very interested in the running backs in this one. So I have the priorities for me as my, my favorites being Tennessee, LAC, uh, Philly, Chicago, and I like the Detroit Jets game maybe a little better than most, followed by my my less interesting games are Dallas, Jacksonville, although I do like it um, more for pieces than for playing the quarterbacks. And Cincinnati, Tampa Bay would be just because I always play the Cincinnati stacks and it's been good to me. Um, as as far as individual plays like Donovan Knight, uh, Travis Etienne, uh, Michael Gallup, um, Evan Ingram. Adams or Jacobs, Denver's defense. I know it's popular, but that's, you know, just I'm just talking about priority guys early in the week. Dulcich, London, um, Kamara, I actually like a lot. And then you have all the Detroit, you know, the Detroit receivers for value, depending on whether Jameson Williams starts. If he doesn't, I'll go back to Shark. If he does, I'll go play Jameson Williams. Those are my my priorities. Oh, and Derrick Henry um, is the one name I forgot to mention. Anna, Con Anna Conwell. You like any of those running backs I mentioned in the – Houston game? Probably not, right? Nope. Okay. Um, all right. Uh so is there anything? Is there a casualty? In other words, there are three there's one game on Thursday, three games on Saturday, ten on Sunday. Is there is there a Sunday night game and a Monday night game too? There's just there is the uh the Sunday night game. Yeah, there's a Sunday night and a Monday night. So there's one, three, there's fifteen. Yeah, they're all playing. Three, fourteen, fifteen. If there's a Thursday, three Saturdays, that's four, 14, 15, yeah, 16 games. There are 32 yep. teams. Yep. Okay. That's it. Then. Okay. That's right. No more buys. That's right. I forgot. No more buys. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, it should be a fun weekend, guys. Good luck to everybody. And let's make some money. Good luck, Sheets. All right, dude. I'll talk to you later. Sounds good.